Today we'll be going over the handheld rig that we make for the Sony A7 III that we use for commercial shoots as well as short narratives. We've been using Sony A7 III for about three years now and it's a great little camera and we've been trying to showcase the awesome things that you can create with this little camera. So handheld rigs are great because you get that little bit of motion, it feels a bit more real and it's, it's a cool look. Some people prefer gimbal look, some people prefer the handheld look. We prefer both. It depends what you're shooting, uh, if you're shooting corporate stuff, if you're shooting more narrative stuff, if you're shooting sports, if you're shooting fast action athletes or cars, you may go for different looks. For handheld rigs, we like shooting a lot of portrait stuff. If there's a lot of people, if there's a bit of drama, handheld rigs are great. So we're going to showcase everything that we use with our handheld rig, which is a cage from a small rig. And we have a nasal rail on top, which you're able to slide different things on, usually a top handle. So we'll have a top handle, which is here, which is also from a small rig. Everything we have here, we'll put a link to down below. What else we have is we have a monitor. This is a monitor from Andy Cine. I think this is called the Andy Cine A6 Plus. Great little monitor. It does what we need it to do and it's pretty affordable. Good little monitor. So then we have the mic, which is the um, the Die TD3 V Mic Pro. This is an awesome mic because you also have your preamps at the back, which is really good. And you're able to just adjust your sound just that much better. And it saves time having to go back into the camera and adjust the settings. All you have to do now is just twist the dials and you're good to go. And then of course you need a lens. I know we do have a lens on this. This is a 35mm and 35mm is probably the extent we'd say you can push the shooting handheld because the tighter the focal length goes, the more apparent shakes become within your footage. We try and shoot wide when we're shooting handheld. So here we have a Canon 24-70 f2.8 lens. I know this is Canon lens and we adapt this Canon lens to the Sony with a Sigma MC11 adapter. You don't get autofocus, but with handheld, if you enjoy racking focus manually, we'll usually do that by hand. And then of course, on the end, we have a matte box because first, matte boxes look cool. And as soon as clients see matte boxes, they just, they just think you're legit. They think you're cool. And it just brings up production value just a bit more. Of course, people shouldn't really care about the gear you're using as long as you're getting the results. However, clients do like to see that you're using like cool gear, gear that looks cool, or high-end or like Hollywood standard gives clients peace of mind they're like okay these guys know what they're doing let's leave them to it and yeah they just kind of trust you a bit more so that was the main reason we got a matte box but it's great because it protects the lens um, and this matte box from small rig also is the small rig mini matte box and you're able to screw in circular ND filters within the matte box which is great so you don't have to put in the uh, those 4x4 glass plates and then we just have a battery, which is the NP F550 batteries that we use for the monitor. And then for the monitor, we use a, a small HDMI cable just to connect to the Sony 7 III. So the first thing we're going to do is put the cage on, put this through. And all we have to do is you see the screw here at the bottom. So now that's fastened in, um, you have the shaky bit at the end, you can take this off. Uh, if you wanted to, um, just because it makes a shaky sound, it's quite annoying. And so the main reason, of course, we're adding a cage is so we have all these mounting points that we can add a top handle, a monitor, and a microphone. Let's take off this lens. So we're just going to press the button and this release is put the adapter on. So the Sony E-mount to Canon EF. We're just going to line up the dots, click that in. Then we're just going to get the, uh, the lens I'm just going to stick this on, put the back box over. So now you have the camera in the cage with the lens on. I'll put the tap handle on, so you have the native rails here. All you have to do is just come over and just slide this on the top and it'll make a clicking sound. So you have a locking mechanism here and then all you have to do is just lock that. And so it's coming together. We're just going to put the monitor on and then all you have to do is this particular handle has a has a cold shoe mount at the top here. The Andy Cine comes with this mount that also has a cold shoe on. And then what you're able to do is just slide that on and make sure that's tight. Tight. And then you have the monitor on here. Then all we're going to do next is you're going to get the cable. Let's put the HDMI in. We usually do one color around the uh, top handle here. And then we take this around and then show you, turn around, find the HDMI port and stick that into there. So now the, the wire, so now you've got a bit of cable management and the, uh, 
the wires on. So to get the monitor working, of course, we need a battery. So we'll just put this battery on at the back. So we have the battery mount. So all we're gonna do is attach that on. If your handle does move around a bit, make sure your native rail is tightened. So you can use your Allen keys that's fastened. I'm gonna put the, uh, that. just gonna put the uh, top handle back on. Open up the lens hood. So now we've got an image here, so you can see what we're filming right there. And then the next thing we're gonna do is put the microphone on. So this particular cage has another cold shoe mount right here. So what you can do is apply this. You can slide that in. If I turn this around so to show you better, slide this in. And then again, we're just gonna coil this over, coil it once around the handle. So then you plug that into the microphone hole. So now you've got your mic working, and then you, of course you can apply your windbreaker or dead cat or whatever it is, just the foam onto your mic. Is essentially your rig. Now a really important thing when using this rig is finding the center of gravity. So at the moment I'm holding this, the camera is still leaning forward. So my hand's not gonna be comfortable holding this rig because all of the weight, you're not gonna get the best shots doing that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move the top handle. And this particular top handle has these screwing points that allow you to tighten or loosen the top handle and move it around. So if we loosen these, you're able to shift the top handle across. I enjoy putting the top handle further up and then we're just going to tighten that back up. Now what we can do is hold the top handle again if it feels more in the center. And what I'm actually going to do is flip the, flip the monitor around. So if you flip the monitor around, you'll be able to get the HDMI port on this side. Therefore, there won't be as much stress on the small HDMI cable. So you can just plug that straight in. So now you can push that cable below the top handle screw at the bottom. And now you're not gonna get any wires getting stuck in your hands uh, when you're holding the top handle. So I usually like to put one finger at the back of this top handle, and that kind of gives you a nice grip. And the rest of the fingers at the front of the handle, so like this, and I'm just able to pick this up. And now we've actually found the center of gravity I was to hold this here. So if I'm holding this with one finger now, you can see it's balancing perfectly. There is a bit of shake, and that's because of the cage and how that's built. Whenever you buy anything from storage, you get a load of screws. So what we do is, and then all you have to do is just go in, put a screw in the side, and just tighten the side of the camera. The screw, you can use an Allen key if you wanted to. But now it's not really shaking as much. That sound is from this bit, which I would recommend taking off which is for the uh, camera strap. So of course you have ND filters, which now you yeah, have to screw in right into the matte box because of the new system they've implemented. So it's, it's a great little thing. So what you can see now is we have the final handheld rig. So it feels pretty comfortable and you can easily make any movements you need. If you need to run, you can, the table's in the way, but you can run like this, but have the handle down and you can move while holding one hand at the bottom and then you can use the use the monitor to then just pull focus, see what's in focus, what's not in focus, and then you're able to move around, you know, keep keep these loose, um, elbows tight, you know, all that kind of stuff, ninja walking, and you'll be good to go. It takes a bit of practice, but it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, I like this rig. The weight's also really, really nice. It's not too heavy. I'm able to carry this for quite a while. Yeah, it's pretty good. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll link everything that we talked about below so you do some research for yourself if you're looking for your own handheld rig. And next time what we'll do is we'll go over our gimbal setup and the different settings we use within our gimbal to get the shots we get with our gimbal. So yeah, thanks for watching.